Harper himself when in Tanzania lobbies on behalf of Canadian mining company, Canadian, a controversial Canadian mining company, Barrick Gold, back in 2007 after Barrick had just announced it was laying off uh, a thousand striking miners. When in, when in Tanzania, Harper's lobbying on behalf of Barrick Gold. Uh, more recent examples in Senegal, when African officials come to Canada, he's there, he's advancing Canadian uh, mining interests uh, on the continent. Harper has also, the Harper government has also channeled tens of millions of dollars of Canadian aid money to advancing the interests of Canadian mining companies across the continent. Uh, one initiative they began uh, last year was something called the Exceed Initiative, the Extractives Cooperation for Enhanced Economic Development, which the government described as, quote, a new funding mechanism to expand Canada's involvement in areas of high development impact in the extractive sector in Africa. Again, that's the Canadian aid money. And so when they talk about high development impact, what they really mean is taking profits from African resources, natural resources, and paying shareholders in Toronto, in Vancouver, and uh, uh, in, uh, in, in Victoria. And one of the more controversial elements of Canadian aid money going into uh, the mining sector in Africa one initiative had the Canadian government providing five and a half million dollars in aid money to an NGO, Plan Canada, for a, uh, a project in the community uh, in, Bur in Burkina Faso where a Canadian mining company was operating and a mining company that was being opposed by much of the local community. And the aid project was very much designed to pacify local opposition. So Canadian aid money brought the NGO Plan Canada together with the company Iron Gold to, to work on a project uh, that the NGO led really to, uh, to pacify local opposition. Another part of Harper's pro-mining policy that receives very little attention uh, is their signing of foreign investment promotion and protection agreements with more than 10 different African countries, signed or negotiated foreign investment promotion and protection agreements, which provide um, uh, company, mining companies with the ability to sue governments for lost profits. To take them to an international tribunal set up in Washington, based in Washington, to sue companies or sue governments for lost profits. Lost profits because a, a government would have uh, 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 nationalized a concession or withdrew a concession. Lost profits even potentially if a, if a government was to bring in domestic procurement rules which mandate a certain amount of products be sourced locally, be sourced within the country to generate jobs uh, internally, that can be the reason for a Canadian mining company to sue an African government under these so-called uh, FIPA accords. And one of the things about these FIPAs that's, a, that's quite dubious is that they um, are effectively locked in for 16 years. So if a, if a uh, elected government in Cameroon signs of FIPA with Ottawa, uh, future governments are beholden to that accord uh, for more than a decade and a half. So a future government that wants to maybe you know, go in a different direction on policy is, is beholden by, uh, by the FIPA, which I, I believe very much undermines uh, electoral democracy. But in a particularly egregious example of undermining electoral democracy, the Har Harper government signed a FIPA with the government in Burkina Faso in the spring. The government in Burkina Faso uh, was a caretaker government, or is a caretaker government, preparing the way for elections. Because back in October of last year, there was a popular revolt that ousted the 27-year Blaise Compare uh, regime, incredibly pro-mining, incredibly pro-Canadian mining regime in Burkina Faso. And so Harper government signed a, the FIPA with a government that had no pretense of electoral legitimacy. It was literally just a caretaker government preparing the way for elections. But it, the FIPA locks in future governments for more than a decade and a half, uh, which I think is quite a flagrant undermining of, of uh, uh, any sense of, 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 of electoral uh, uh, democracy or legitimacy. The Harper government has been lobbying and spending Canadian aid money and signing FIPAs uh, on behalf of Canadian mining companies 
that have been engaged in a great deal of abuses. In the book, I have a chapter that's somewhere towards 15,000 words of example after example of Canadian mining companies in different countries uh, in, re responsible for displacing communities, responsible for credible ecological damage, and in many instances responsible for significant violence. And probably the worst example, uh, one of the Barrick Gold Mines in Tanzania, Barrick security forces and police paid for by Barrick have uh, been responsible for about two dozen deaths, killings over the past uh, decade. So numerous examples of people being uh, uh, killed. Despite that, the Harper government backs the mining uh, industry uh, aggressively.